Hello, everyone. In today's video lectures, we're going to be talking about coating disorders of the skin. Let's have a look. And again, most of us are familiar with these commonly referred to terms of the skin, but in case you're not, they're in your text. One that we're particularly concerned with are the skin ulcers, the decubitus ulcers, and we'll talk more about them when we get into present on admission and other things. So please take a moment and review these terms. Itis in medical terminology, as we know, means inflammation. So dermatitis is basically inflammation of the skin or in our more specifically, that outer layer of the skin. And there's several different types, as you can see illustrated here. It can be atopic dermatitis, the L20 category, seborrheic dermatitis, L21, diaper dermatitis, L22, and so on. But regardless of the type, this inflammation of the skin is dermatitis. In other words, the outer layer of the skin. Psoriasis is this type of epidermal arithmetic papules and plaques. So basically this kind of silvery, scaly type of effect that you have. Psoriasis is a chronic illness and we can have the psoriasis vulgaris, other terms that you'll see, psoriatic arthritis, mutilans, so on. So you can see these all in the L40. Please keep reading after you see the main term of psoriasis. Pressure ulcers have a lot of interest in medical care. Frequently, elderly patients are back and forth between the skilled nursing facility and the acute care setting. And sometimes they're admitted with these skin ulcers and they range in severity. So it's very important to train providers so we can code them correctly. And we'll talk more about this, about how it affects reimbursement when the skin ulcers are present on admission versus not present on admission. So two things we wanna make sure that are documented by providers with these pressure ulcers are the location. In other words, left, right, elbow, shoulder, buttock, whatever it is, and the depth. The depth relates to the stage of the skin ulcer. And your book gives you some great breakdown of what's the difference between stage one versus stage three and so on. Please note that just because we have ulcers, they could be pressure or non-pressure. Non-pressure ulcers get coded to L97 and L98. That's something that's a little bit outside of our scope right now. The stages, and this is very nicely illustrated in your text, are as follows. Stage one is basically this reddening, the start of the skin breakdown from somebody sitting in one position. So they're sitting propped on their elbows, they get decreased blood flow and they get this kind of reddening on the skin, right? Partial thickness, skin loss. So we've worked our way past the redness. We've worn through the dermis and the epidermis. And sometimes we get this type of blistering effect. These are the stage two, right? The blistering and the complete breakdown of the skin through the dermis and epidermis. Stage three, you have this kind of cratering effect. So it's worked its way through the epidermis, the dermis. We're past the blistering stage. We're working our way into the subcutaneous, otherwise referred to fatty tissue, but we don't have involvement of any bone, tendon, or muscle yet. The involvement of the bone, tendon, and muscle is going down to stage four. So in other words, all the skin layers prior to the bone, tendon, and muscle are now necrotic. And these are very, very nasty types of wounds. Sometimes I've seen documentation where they have to involve amputation and other unfortunate events. One thing that is important to keep in mind is the last point in this slide, and that's a 
unstageable ulcers is an unspecified. Unstageable means we can't stage it. This could be because it has a dressing on it, a wound vac or what have you. Unspecified means that they mentioned an ulcer, but they just didn't say what stage it was. So we really don't know what's happening. So important to be very clear on the difference between unstageable versus unspecified.